Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, hello students. Welcome to the le next lecture of our fluid dynamics, uh, fluid kinematics module. So today we are going to revise some of the concepts and introduce some new terminologies. So let's go ahead and define a system. That what do we mean by a system? So when I'm going to talk about a system, I mean a portion of fluid. By system, I mean a portion of my fluid. And you have heard this one in the previous lecture is uh, what is control volume. So control volume is my fixed geometry means a fixed uh, shape okay so uh, by system i mean a portion of my fluid because we, we are dealing with the fluid kinematics so i'm going whenever i say a system so i mean a portion of fluid and by portion of fluids it means it is deformable it can be deformed it can uh, flow because we are dealing with fluid kinematics and by control volume i means that my ge geometry is fixed so in today's lecture we are going to develop a relation between our system and our control volume so what does this mean uh, because in our daily life we counter several such problems in which we are dealing with uh, a system of fluid and uh, control volume so let's go through some practical examples and then i'm going to come to my main topic so let's suppose you have uh, uh, seen this example time and time again there is a pipe and i can say that there is a fluid flowing in this pipe so in this case the pipe is my control volume given that i am the i am studying the flow of the fluid inside this pipe and uh, here the fluid is my system So if I am concerned with the flow in and out of the uh, pipe, then I am dealing with the control volume and system problem. I would like to uh, divide this problem into two portions. One is my control volume, which is fixed, and the other is my fluid that is moving, and I am calling this a system. So uh, again, another example can be more uh, generalized. Uh, we can take a NACA profile, an aerofile like uh, let's say i have an aerofoil this is my aerofoil and i would like to see the lift and drag that occurs in this aerofoil as the fluid is flowing around this as the fluid is flowing around this aerofoil okay So here, uh, here now I have to fix my control volume. So let's say this is uh, my control volume. Okay. This is my control volume, and by fixing this control volume, it means that now I am going to st I am going to study my system that is my fluid within this control volume. So the fluid that is uh, flowing over this Naka profile in this control volume that will be uh, my point of interest and this, this this is what i'm going to study so why are we doing this we are doing this because we want to develop a relation between our uh, control volume we want to develop a relation between our control volume and our system that is our portion of fluid that is moving through this control volume uh, this is uh, a, an aerodynamics problem because we use uh, such uh, scenarios to find the lift and drag uh, on an aerofile and we uh, we study the flow patterns uh, by visual methods and also by simulations to study the uh, flow uh, the drag the drag coefficient the lift coefficient uh, of an aerofile and uh, how will this behave if it is uh, fixed in an aircraft so this is a 
simple fluid dynamics problem but still we divide this problem into two portions again one is our control volume you heard this term again and again which is our fixed uh, uh, portion and the other is the system that is our moving fluid so here we are more concerned about the lift and drag coefficient in this particular case in the pipe example we were more more concerned uh, with the flow inside and outside the pipe we can take other fluid dynamics problem like uh, if we say like in previous lectures we took a boiler and we studied the temperature field in that boiler so that uh, for that purpose we also defined a control volume and uh, in that uh, system was our flowing fluid that was uh, moving through that control volume so there are many examples in our practical life uh, that we use uh, to study the aerodynamics or the flow rates or the temperature fields in uh, our daily life so what we need is a Reynolds transport theorem so this theorem provides us with a relation through which we can compute our rate of extensive property as a system moves throughout our control volume so this uh, uh, theorem this theorem provides a relation between our system and our control volume so if we would like to see what forces is the system uh, subjecting on the control volume we will use the Reynolds transport theorem if we want to be if you want to see the behavior of the system if it goes through a control volume in which certain object is placed so we will use the Reynolds transport theorem so this theorem basically gives us a relation between a system and a control volume and uh, with this relation we can uh, we can see the behavior of the system within the control volume because we again divide our uh, fluid uh, dynamic problems into mainly two portions one is our system and one is our control volume again system is our fluid and control volume our is our fixed geometry or that portion that we want to specify around our concerned geometry so uh, again uh, let's move forward to the next slide and uh, here uh, i'm going to talk about our extensive error and intensive property now so what are extensive and intensive properties so extensive properties and intensive properties uh, you have already covered this in your thermodynamics uh, uh, course Extensive properties are those properties which are de dependent on the amount of a system. Now, it is dependent on mass because this is our quantity of matter. So, the amount of the system, it is here. Extensive properties are those that are dependent on mass. And intensity, intensive properties are those that are not dependent on mass. So, this is the main difference. Uh, why we need these properties because uh, extensive properties here is denoted by capital b these are my extensive properties extensive properties and uh, here extensive properties includes mass momentum and kinetic energy so these are my extensive properties and these are my intensive properties that are also defined as extensive property per unit mass so if i take the intensive properties of these extensive properties i will get these terms so what i'm more concerned about is extensive properties and uh, these extensive properties are in this case my mass momentum and kinetic energy because when a fluid moves through a control volume so the forces that occur uh, due to that flow is due to these uh, the extensive properties that is the mass momentum and kinetic energy coupled with of course velocity or acceleration so these extensive property uh, subject uh, our control volume to different uh, type of forces and that's what we are concerned about that's what we want to find and that's what we are more interested uh, to develop a relation between our system and our control volume so that we can uh, develop flow scenarios and predict our flow scenarios that what is going to happen when a certain system flows through a certain control volume and this is what we are more particularly interested in that one what happens when a fluid flows through a particular object flows through means if a flow through a pipe let's suppose this is a flow through a pipe 
this is an orifice and I'm more concerned about the flow rate that is occurring in that pipe. So this is what uh, happens when a fluid flows through a particular object. Uh, okay, so here again, there are my system. This is my system and this is my control volume. One is fixed, one is moving. And the other is what effect the fluid will have on a particular object when it interacts with it. That was my aerofile that what will happen when an aerofile is subjected to uh, a fluid, a flowing fluid, what will happen, how much drag and lift will it generate. So these are the two points that I want to, uh, I will explain again and again over this course of lecture and this is what I'm more concerned about that what happens when a fluid flows through a particular object and what happens when a fluid interacts with a particular object and this is uh, what we gain from our Reynolds transport theorem. So this is what our Reynolds transport theorem gives us. So let's move forward. So we can first develop this relation from our extensive and intensive properties because uh, to see the relation of our control system and our control volume, we will need this relation because uh, in this we are studying all our extensive properties that was denoted by B in the previous slide. It was mentioned that is our mass, uh, mass, our momentum, that is our momentum and kinetic energy. So these three are my uh, extensive properties and this these extensive properties are related by this equation that is mb and b was if you remember was equal to b over m that was extensive property per unit mass. So now you can make sense of this equation that why we have written it like this. So we will use this equation to develop a relation between our control system and our control volume. So if we write this equation for let's suppose a small uh, fluid or a small portion of fluid or let's say a single particle of fluid. So if the limit delta V if is approaching to zero max, means we are taking a very small quantity of fluid. So we can write this equation like this. If we use the sigma sign uh, for I number of particles, so this B is for I number of particles, I can be one, two, three. So if we want to see the effect of these uh, extensive properties in a system for a single particle, so I will be then equal to one. So B is our intensive property and that is rho for density and V is for volume. Uh, here we have written this mass in terms of rho V. So you can see that density is equal to mass per unit volume. So mass can be equal to density into volume. So this is what this term represents here. So this is uh, for a single uh, particle of fluid if I put I is equal to 1. But uh, I want this relation for the whole system. So what will I do is I will integrate this uh, equation for the whole system and this is what I get. Now I am integrating this for the whole system. So I will get this extensive property for the whole system in terms of density, in terms of property and volume. Uh, I want to see the uh, rate of change with respect to time uh, of these extensive properties in the system. These are my extensive properties in the system. So I want to see the time uh, uh, rate of change uh, in these extensive property of the system. So I will simply use my uh, uh, full derivative uh, d or dt to see the uh, change with respect to time in these extensive properties. So this is for the system. I can write the same. Uh, this same uh, equation can be written for the control volume. So this is my relation for the system. That is my moving fluid. And this one is for my control volume, which will be fixed and my fluid will be moving. So I have uh, written uh, the uh, terminology of the uh, extensive properties. I am using the terminology of extensive property for my system and for my control 
volume and I have written these two equations. Now I will further use these two equations in a particular scenario to develop a relation between my system and control volume for uh, a uniform geometry and a uniform velocity. So let's move forward. Now uh, this is my control volume. This is my control volume. And by control, defining this as a control volume, this will remain fixed. And uh, this is my system. It means this is the fluid that is within this control volume. So you are seeing that they are both coinciding. They are both coinciding. They are both uh, the system is within the control volume in this particular case. So if I say that at a certain time t both the system both the system and the control volume coincide okay at a certain time t both the system and the control volume is coinciding so uh, what this means is the extensive parameter b at time t of the system and both the control volume and system coincide what will be that equation now that equation that we written that b is equal to our m small b so we want to relate this equation both for our system and our control volume and we can write this at a certain time p the extensive property of the system will be the same as the extensive property of the control volume at a certain time t why because they are both coinciding the fluid is inside the control volume so the extensive property of the system will be the same as the extensive property within the control volume. So in this case, it is the same because both the control volume and the system are coinciding. Now let's uh, see when a scenario, when the system is moving out of this control volume. So what will happen? Uh, we will again write this equation, but it will, uh, this equation will now change when the system moves out of this control volume. So we will like to see that scenario and develop an equation. So again, that is the equation that we previously uh, saw that at time t when both the system and the control volume were coinciding, the extensive properties were the same. But uh, now this is again our control volume and uh, in this uh, scenario at a certain time t plus delta t, this control uh, system, this system is now moving out of this control uh, volume. So this is our again this is our control volume and this is the system that is moving out at a certain time t plus delta t so because we are dealing with the fluid kinematics problem so definitely with a change in time this fluid will move out of the system so now we will write in this equation we will write this equation for this scenario what happens uh, to this equation when we apply it on this scenario here we will have uh, two uh, portions uh, because in the previous case the system and the control volume are coinciding but now they are not so we will have two portion one is the this is uh, one this is two or if we use the roman letters that will be good i will use roman letters uh, so this is my portion number one portion number two so this is what is going into the system that is into the system sorry into the control volume into the control volume fluid into the control volume and fluid out of the control volume so that is the uh, my system going into the control volume and my system going out of the control volume so i get these two extra regions that I will like to explain it further when I write the equation for this scenario. So now let's see what our equation will look like. And this is how our equation will look like when we write this equation for time t plus delta t. So the extensive property of the system at time t plus delta t, t will be equal to the extensive properties of the control volume at time t plus delta t minus uh, you can 
ignore this minus sign for a little while i will come back to it uh, that is uh, this is the extensive property of the fluid going into the system and this is the extensive property of the fluid going out of the system this negative sign is used to differentiate the fluid fluid going into the system from the fluid going out of the system so that negative sign is here for the fluid going into the system representing the extensive properties of the fluid going into the system so that b1 is this region and b2 is this region because this is the extensive properties b1 of fluid going into the system and b2 of my fluid going out of the system so this negative sign shows that the fluid is going into the system this positive sign shows that the fluid is going out of the system so here now again if we want to see this equation and uh, let's again go through it so my extensive property of system at time t plus delta t at time t plus delta t when they are not now coinciding so that uh, extensive property of my system will be equal to my extensive properties of the in the control volume at time t plus delta t minus the extensive properties of the fluid when it is going into the system and by into the system i have put a negative sign to represent it uh, the directional sense of it and uh, b2 is my fluid going out of the system and for that my, i have put the positive sign to represent that it is going out of the system now what does this mean uh, i'm here we are going to talk about the left hand and the right hand side of this equation and explain it a little bit further so if you can see i'm more concerned about the extensive properties of the system at this time and then i'm equating it to other terms okay so let's take this term that uh, extensive property of my control volume minus the extensive property of my fluid that is going into the system so this is my control volume this red dotted this dotted this dashed is my control volume so this term this term b is my extensive properties in the control volume okay so this is my whole control volume that uh, red dashed area and minus b1 t plus delta t uh, the extensive property of the system going uh, of the system going into the control volume extensive property of the system going into the control volume so it is representing this region it is representing this region this b1 e plus delta t is basically representing this region this region right here the extensive properties inside this region of the fluid that is moving into this area so here again i am subtracting this region this region i am subtracting this region from this whole control volume as you can see the equation from this whole control volume if i subtract this region what will i get as per equation what will i get if i from this control volume i subtract this region i will get this region i will get this region okay i will get this whole region when i subtract the extensive properties of my control volume uh, 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 and the extensive properties of my fluid that are going into the system so i get this region plus plus this region that is the exit uh, of my control system out of the control volume so i get i add this region so now you can make more sense out of this equation that why my extensive properties for this whole system is equal to these terms because by uh, subtracting the extensive properties of the control uh, volume and the uh, extensive properties of the fluid going into the system we get this region we get this region we get this region 
so we got this region and we now uh, we need to add this region too so this is our portion going out of the system so we add this term with this equation and we get the extensive properties that are going out of the system at time t plus delta t so now you can make more sense of this equation that why we are writing it in this term and why we are putting in the minus and the plus signs so basically what we are more concerned is about the extensive properties of the system that is moving through this control volume and moving in and out so that was our equation for at time t plus delta t when at time t plus delta t and this fluid is moving out of this system so this is now how this equation will look like at time t plus delta t so moving forward what we are more concerned about is the change with respect to time because we are dealing with fluid kinematics and in fluid kinematics the fluid is flowing and we are more concerned about the geometry of flow and that geometry of flow is going to change with respect to time so the change in expensive property with time interval delta t is given below in this form so what we are more concerned is the total change with respect to time in the system so this is what this equation become when we see the total change uh, in the extensive properties of the system with respect to time delta t so we are going to uh, subtract the uh, extensive properties of the system at time t and the extensive properties of the system at time t plus delta t to get the time rate of change of the extensive properties of the system and again by system i mean my fluid i am going to do the same for my control volume that is my control volume at time t plus delta t minus my control volume at time t then again this term that is the extensive properties of the fluid going into the system extensive properties of the fluid going out of the system and this whole divided by dt because we we, we are more concerned about the rate uh, because the change with respect to time so that is why we are uh, using the d by dt for this equation to see the rate of change in these extensive properties with respect to time so how will this equation look like uh, we will move to the other slide so this is what uh, i got from the previous slide this equation when i included the time rate of change in these extensive properties and this is uh, these are those terms that are uh, occupying the volume so one is my system okay so and one is my control volume there is another difference i am talking about the total change with respect to time so that is why i have written it with capital d or dt that is what we did when we used this capital d or dt in material der derivative because we were more concerned about the total change uh, total change and here we are seeing the total change in the extensive properties of the system with respect to time we are more concerned about the extensive properties of the system with respect to time when it flows through a particular control volume and uh, those extensive properties how will they behave when they flow through a particular volume with respect to time so this is the total derivative of the extensive properties of the system this is the partial derivative uh, of the extensive properties of, of that fluid that will behave in that control volume with respect to time so these are the things that occupy a volume because a control volume is definitely a fixed volume and a system is going to flow through that volume so that is why we are uh, differentiating it in, in these uh, in, in in volume terms and then there is the extensive properties of the fluid that is going in and out that is going in and that is going out so here we are also taking the mass flow rate in this uh, equation we are also concerned about the mass flow rate that is going into the system and that is going out to out to the out of the system so here we are more concerned about the extensive properties of the fluid going in and out so there from 
this equation can be again simplified into these two terms one that is occupying the volume and one that is going in and out of the system so now we can uh, develop a generalized uh, equation for this simple case for the simple uniform geometry and uniform velocity but first i'm going to explain this term that how this a1 v1 got here how are we talking about in terms of mass flow rate so let's see this so let's say this was my equation uh, before i put it in the system so let's write the equation that is rho So here that is my equation that is previously it was written as uh, rho b v that was my density and that was my intensive property and that was my volume okay so now here i am going to uh, take this volume and uh, write it like this in terms of flow rate so i'm how i'm going to do this is uh, when i take the uh, i write this volume in terms of area and length so if i take this that uh, minus rho b v and i leave out these two and i write this in terms of area into a certain length Certain delta L. So area into length will give us the volume, and uh, here we are dealing with fluid kinematics. So I can simplify this term further uh, in terms of velocity and time. So that's what I'm going to do because velocity is our change in length divided by time. Okay. So this is what I'm going to put. Uh, here and uh, this is what so i'll get area into v delta t okay so that is how my av got here and that delta t will cancel out with this one so we will get this term that is rho a1 v1 b1 when we put this term, a1 v1 in this so again we can also uh, write this in terms of mass flow rates that is what we are more concerned about that is my mass flow rate into the system my mass flow rate out of the system and this is what i am going to represent it with these extensive properties okay so again this was uh, how i got this equation and i divided into these terms and now i am equating in these terms to a more generalized terms okay and that is the total change in my extensive properties with respect to time that is my partial change in control uh, the extensive properties within the control volume uh, the fluid that is within the control volume and its extensive properties and its change with respect to time the partial change in respect to time and this is my fluid going into the system this is my fluid going into the system their extensive properties and my fluid going out of the system and their extensive properties so before going any further uh, again i would like to remind you that why we are doing this we were doing this to develop a relation between our system and our control volume so for that we uh, took our control volume like this and uh, through it we passed a system of fluid so that's how we got these terms and now uh, i'm going to write this in a generalized form to get a renault transport theorem in a more generalized sense so this is how my final renault transport theorem will look like 
that is my total change in the extensor properties within the system okay total change within the system and by system again what is our system that is our fluid so the total change with respect to time in this in the system is equal to the partial change in the extensor properties within the control volume with respect to time plus the uh, fluid and its extensor properties that is going out of the system minus the extensor properties of the fluid that has that are going into the system so this is the total change of the system and this total change is equal to the change in the control volume that is the fixed uh, that is my fixed geometry here and uh, the stuff that is crossing the boundaries stuff that is crossing the boundaries is again our fluid but we are more concerned about its flow rate that when it is going into the bound into the control volume and going out of the control volume so the, that is how i am uh, relating my system and my control volume and this is uh, what we are more interested to see that how our system behaves when it moves into the control volume but not into the control volume how it moves out and how will it behave inside the control volume depending on the control volume because the control volume can change here it is a confined control volume and the fluid is going into the system in, in, inside and the fluid is moving inside this control volume so our control volume can be again that aerofile uh, that aerofile and the space around this aerofile can also be designated as, as a control volume so what will be this uh, how will this equation behave in this case so again we will be more concerned about the uh, extensor properties of the system but how will this those extensor properties behave inside this control volume and when they go in and when they go out so this is how i am going to get the total sense of my extensor properties extensor properties of my system and again by extensor properties i mean my mass my momentum my kinetic energy because this is what we talk about we talk about the conservation of mass we talk about the conservation of momentum we talk about the conservation of kinetic energy and we have already discussed that that why we talk about the conservation of mass because the total mass that that moves through the system will remain the same the total momentum will be conserved the total energy will be conserved so that is why we take our extensive properties in terms of mass momentum and energy so this is uh, this is again uh, let's move to the other uh, slide and let's see what this equation actually represents so again this is my renard transport theorem and uh, this equation is derived from uniform surfaces uniform surfaces and uniform velocities so this is my simple case that uh, what i derived uh, uh, earlier that i derived it for a uniform surface i took a uniform control volume and uh, i assume that my velocities are uniform that are moving through this control volume so we will like to generalize we will like to generalize it more for more complex uh, uh, fluid flow phenomena that uh, for example that if a fluid is if we want to check the aerodynamics of a car or the aerodynamics of an aerofile or if we want to see the extensive properties inside a boiler so we need a more generalized term so that we can apply to every scenario that how will this renal transport theorem uh, act in that scenario a more generalized term so let's take uh, this uh, scenario in which we have now an arbitrary shape this arbitrary shape these blue dots these blue dots are now my control volume these blue dots dashes sorry these blue dashes represent my control volume Okay. so this is my control volume that is fixed and this is the fluid that is going into the control volume and that is the fluid going out of this control volume so now this shape is not uniform you can see and the velocity will not be uniform because the shape is not uniform so now we like to uh, make it uh, make an equation so that we can generalize our this uh, renault transport theorem equation and generalize it for different flow phenomena so let's say i take a portion of this outflow okay i take a portion of this outflow 
and I draw it here. Well, I'm not actually going to draw it, but uh, I'm going to represent it here like this. That means I have taken a portion of this outflow and I have magnet magnified it and I'm now showing it here. So what is happening here? Let's see that. What I'm more concerned about when I talk about generalizing this equation, I'm more concerned about the uh, fluid that is going into the into and out of this uh, control volume. So I'm generalizing this term. I'm generalizing this term so that I can write one equation for this uh, uh, extensive properties that is going into the system and extensive properties that are going out of the system. I want to write one equation for these terms and for that I'm doing I'm taking this arbitrary shape and uh, now I'm analyzing this outflow here. So if I draw this outflow here, this will look something like this. And here I'm drawing two vectors. One is the n unit vector. This is the n unit vector. n unit vector that is the normal to the surface. n unit vector that is normal to this surface normal to this outflow surface and the other is my velocity this is in the direction of that flow this is my velocity okay so this is an unit vector means its magnitude is equal to one so it is even this is only given us the sense of direction nothing else and this is our velocity so if we take a dot product if we take a, uh, and yes and we are taking a small area that is delta a here and we are uh, drawing these vectors for this small area delta a that is my unit vector n and my velocity vector v for this small uh, area delta a so let's say i take a dot product of this v dot and d a okay so what will happen uh, you can remember from your statics course that uh, this dot product will result in v dot n d a cos of theta. So this v dot n d a cos of theta is telling us something. What is it telling us? Uh, it is telling us this uh, that theta if it is between 0 and uh, sorry if this theta is equal is if this theta is between um, 0 and 90 degrees if this is the scenario then we will get a result that is positive we will get a positive result so that positive will tell us that this is the outflow that the fluid is going out of the system so this is what it is telling us this dot product that if we take the dot, dot product of this velocity v and this unit vector uh, n unit vector normal unit vector that is normal to the surface and its result is positive that it means that it's uh, that this theta is somewhere between lies between 0 and 90 degrees and we are getting a result that is positive so this is how our uh, flow will look like and this is uh, our outflow this is our outflow so let's see another uh, example of our inflow what will our inflow look like that is the portion of the fluid that was going out of this control volume so we got a positive result from the dot product of the velocity and n unit vector now let's see what happens when we see a scenario in which uh, we are representing the inflow portion of the control surface now i am taking a surface here and i have magnified it and drawn it here so again i am taking a small control uh, area small area that is my delta a that is my delta a so i am representing the inflow area so the unit normal that that is the unit normal that will now be directed inward the uh, area because i'm talking about inflow so that unit uh, normal will be directed inwards so now uh, the velocity is again in the same direction that is moving outwards because the fluid is moving in a particular direction the direction of the fluid flow is the same so that will be 
the direction of our velocity the change the velocity direction will not change but the unit vector normal direction can change depends that if you are taking the outflow portion of this control surface or the inflow portion of the control surface so here you can see the uh, for the outflow portion this new net normal vector is uh, is coming out of this control surface and uh, for this case the for the inflow surface that is going into the control surface because we are talking about the inflow portion so here now you can see the theta if we take the dot product of in this scenario that v dot n d a we will get v and d a cos of theta so here you can see that theta is not less than 90 it is more than 90 so if theta in this case is greater than 90 degree we will get a negative result we will get our uh, that uh, we will get our negative result that is for this for this portion when we talk about the extensive properties of a fluid that is going into the system so that is why we get this negative sign also so we get this negative sign because here the theta is greater than 90 degree so if we take the cos theta of something that is greater than 90 we will get a number that will have a negative sign with it so this will represent our uh, Uh, our portion of a fluid that is going into the control volume so if i am going to write an equation of this um, that is b out minus b in so i can write it like this that is b out minus b in is equal to the control surface out this is how i am going to represent it that is the control surface going into the Uh, so into the uh, that is the control the extensive properties of the fluid going out of the system minus the extensive properties of the fluid going going into the uh, system so here you can see the minus sign due to this dot product because the theta here is greater than 90 we have already established this so now we can write this as a single term okay so we can represent these with a single equation that is rho b v dot n d a so we can write this single equation for this scenario for the stuff that is crossing the boundary we can now write a single equation for this because here the dot product is now uh, specifying that whether this uh, uh, extensive property is going uh, the, this fluid is going into the system or going out of the system and what are we studying Uh, either we are studying the extensive properties of the fluid that are going into the system and either we are uh, studying the extensive property of a fluid that are going out of the system so this dot product is defining that in and out uh, of in inflow and outflow of those of this fluid so that is why we can use this single equation because now we can incorporate both the inflow and the outflow in this single equation so again this is how my final renal transport theorem will look like that is my total change in the extensive property of the system with respect to time is equal to my partial change in the extensive properties of the fluid that are inside the control volume with respect to time and the stuff the fluid the system that is going into and out of the system and now you can see i am sim i have simply replaced this term here in this equation by this so this is our more generalized form of uh, renal transport theorem and uh, here we have just uh, we have just simplified our uh, flow that is going in and out of the system in terms of using the dot product so this dot product between these two terms my velocity and my unit vector normal and the small area can now define um, the direction of my fluid that either it is going in the system or either it is going out of the system so now this is a more generalized term and it can be applied to any scenario not only to uniform surfaces uniform velocities but it can now be applied to any scenario uh, so this is what i wanted to do to generalize this renal transport theorem this renal transport theorem into this form so this is our final this is how our final equation for renal transport theorem looks like so let's again go through what 
this means why we have done all this because we were more concerned about a relation between our system and our control volume so again our system was our fluid and uh, our control volume was the geometry that is fixed so what happens when this system interacts with this control volume or uh, what happens when this system moves through this control volume we needed a relation that was provided to us by our null transport theorem and the null transport theorem begin its begins its arguments by taking the extensive properties uh, for the system and uh, applying uh, those extensive properties when that system is moving through control volume so what will happen when these extensive pro what will happen to these extensive properties when they move through a control volume so that control volume can be an internal surface that can be an external object and we will be studying the aerodynamics of that object for an internal case we will we'll be studying a flow rate so it can be anything but basically what this equation does it it provides us a link between our system and our control volume and how these extensive properties change with time uh, when it flows through a particular control volume and what will be the inflow out and outflow uh, that uh, when a uh, fluid flows through a control volume so this is what it basically tells us it provides us a link between our system and our control volume and how the system behaves when it flows through or around a particular control volume so hopefully this is clear and uh, see you in the next class. Love is.